Well, today we're jumping into Ezra chapter 7. I called this section God's Work Under God's Hand. If you do find these videos useful, then I do encourage you to like them and subscribe to this channel and perhaps share them with others who you think might find this content useful. Um, it is a joy for me to dig into God's Word and to teach it to others. And so I pray that it would be a joy for you digging into this passage along with me. As always, just take some time to read through the chapter for yourself, familiarize yourself with what's going on, and I'll just highlight a few of the things that I've noticed in my journey through this chapter. Just to start off, um, Ezra chapters 1 to 6 are the first half of the book, and when we jump into chapter 7, when it says, after these things, in the time of King Artaxerxes, and then we see um, in the seventh year over here of King Artaxerxes, um, we are jumping ahead to the next generation. Uh, we're jumping ahead 57 years uh, to the year 458 BC. So by the end of chapter 6 of Ezra, the temple was completed which was the task that they had been sent home to do. And after the temple is dedicated, 57 years have passed. So it's a whole new generation and some new events happen. And it's worth just um, highlighting some of the key characters. I think that's the most helpful tool for us to use in understanding what's happening in this section. And so just one character worth noting is Artaxerxes, king of Persia. So we we saw Cyrus, and then we've seen Darius. Between Darius and Artaxerxes, there's a king called Xerxes, and you can read all about him in the book of Esther. Um, but here we have King Artaxerxes, and he is a key player in this story. So in Old Testament narrative, if you followed a number of my other videos in Ezra, I would have used the narrative plot arc, which is generally a really helpful way to see the structure of a passage. But in some stories like this one, it's worth looking at the characters and they help you to see what's happening. And so Artaxerxes is one key character. But finally, in the book of Ezra, Ezra himself enters the scene so let's just highlight where we see Ezra in this story and a little bit about who he is. This idea of Ezra being a teacher, um, following in the line of Moses, he's set up to be very much like Moses in this section. I'll highlight a bit of that in a moment. Okay, so two of our key characters, we've got Artaxerxes and Ezra, who are main players in the story. But there's some other very important repetition in this chapter that we need to see. And we'll see this both in chapter 7 and in chapter 8. Uh, the hand of the Lord his God was on him. And we see again the gracious hand of his God was on him. And right at the end the hand of the Lord my God was on me. So the hand of God um, at work behind the scenes, making sure that his purposes are achieved. And just to focus in, it's the hand of the Lord, um, the gracious hand of his God. It's called the God of Israel the God who's in Jerusalem, the God of heaven, your God, he's called. He's the God who has put it into the heart of the king. Um, so praise be to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. And it's the hand of this Lord, my God, who is on me. Just a couple of other areas of repetition that are worth noting. So uh, Jerusalem as the city 
of God, City of David, is highlighted a number of times. So Ezra is specifically sent back to uh, Judah in Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem in Judah at least. So Jerusalem is in focus, that's where Ezra is heading, and very specifically to the temple that we saw completed in the, the previous six chapters, that was the focus, and it's still the focus here in that Ezra is going back to ensure that the worship of God in this temple is, is done rightly. Okay, so we've jumped into the next generation. King Artaxerxes is on the throne. The focus is on Ezra and all he does, but it's ultimately what Ezra does under the hand of God. So God is at work. Um, God's work is being done through Ezra under God's hand. Now, just a couple of things about who this Ezra is. He's given this whole long genealogy. It's quite a long genealogy as genealogies go. Um, and when you get a long genealogy, it's showing you that somebody significant is entering the story um, but he is shown at the end of his genealogy to be the son of Aaron the chief priest so Ezra's ancestry here actually tells us more about God's faithfulness than it does about Ezra himself um, God has raised up uh, another priest in the line of Aaron to come and minister at the temple in Jerusalem and God is really blessing this uh, Ezra, uh, he granted him everything he asked. Um, God is at work in the details. Um, he says here, yeah, give him anything else that he needs. So the king really is showing him great favor. Some other very key repetition about Ezra, talking about him being well-versed. Um, he's devoted himself uh, to the study and observance and teaching and that's one of the biggest repetitions that we'll see um, in this section so he's learned but he's a teacher and then whenever or very often when God is spoken of yeah he's spoken of his God um, so in very personal terms his the hand of his God was on him um, even as Artaxerxes speaks about God he speaks your God And then Ezra himself speaking, verse 28, speaks about the Lord as my God. So we see here a man who has um, a, a deep love for God. And Ezra 7 verse 10, um, in many ways a key verse in this section, just describing this man. Um, it says, for Ezra had devoted himself, the ESV is better here, where it says... Um, that he he had prepared his heart to seek the law so that is the study seeking the law preparing his heart to do that and then doing it so he, he sought the law studied the law he did it and he taught it and the focus is on Ezra setting his heart devoting himself to the study and observance of the law so he really is being set up as a man who, who knows and loves God. And his love of God is seen in that he wants to know God better through the study of God's word. And not just the study of God's word, but actually doing what God's word says. Um, which we see in James chapter 1. We are all called to be doers of the word. Or Luke chapter 8. Um, where Jesus says that his mother and brothers are those who hear the word and do it. And Ezra here is shown as somebody who, who does God's word. He observes it and does what it says. Like we've seen in other letters from kings in um, Ezra so far, God is at work in the details here. Um, God provides that all the people who want to go may go. So Ezra is kind of given uh, freedom to take who he needs to go and do the work back in Jerusalem. Um, the task he's given to do is to check whether, to inquire whether they are actually living according to uh, the law of God. So he's going back to make sure that God's people are living God's way. Are they? The, the temple's now there where sacrifice can be made, but
but are these people actually living the holy lives that they've been called to live? And then the king says that they can take silver and gold um, in order to do the sacrifices in this temple. Um, he says they are to deliver the articles um, entrusted for the worship in the temple and anything else that they need. And then he speaks to the treasurers and he says up to a hundred talents of silver, uh, which in South African terms today would be 40 million rands worth of silver that is getting given to this work. And then a hundred cores of wheat, hundred bars of wine, hundred bars of olive oil. That's enough um, wheat and wine and olive oil for temple work for about two years. So Artaxerxes is being incredibly generous uh, to God's work, which is just showing that God's hand is at work throughout the story. And then, amazingly, in verse 25 um, and 26, Ezra is commissioned to appoint magistrates and judges. Now, we can miss potentially what's going on here, but... Ezra, by doing that, is being given the power to, to change the world of his day. To change the world according to God's wisdom. He's setting up magistrates and judges who will administer justice according to the laws of God. And he's to teach anyone who doesn't know them. And... King Artaxerxes says that those who don't listen to him will be punished by death, banishment, confiscation of property or imprisonment. Ezra is being set free to set up the world in Jerusalem to run God's way. It is an incredible thing that's happening here. In Ezra sees that he is fulfilling scripture throughout this section um, where it says here that the Lord put it into the king's heart to bring honor uh, this is more literally to beautify God's house. Um, and that's something that we saw prophesied in Isaiah 60 verse 7. And so Ezra sees what's happening here as a direct fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. Um, it's incredible to see God at work in all the details of the story. And so under God's hand... Ezra takes courage and goes to do the work that God had called him to do. And as we dig into a story like this, um, it should encourage us. Uh, we are also, as God's beloved children, we are living under God's hand and he's given us work to do, which we should take courage to do. But as we continue through our journey through Ezra, we'll see that although he is a great leader, he couldn't do the one big thing that needed to happen. He couldn't change the hearts of the people he was leading. In chapter 9, two chapters time, we see him literally pulling his hair out because he couldn't change the people's hearts, which should catapult us ahead to another man, another descendant from the people of Israel, who we are given a much longer genealogy for in Matthew chapter 3. A genealogy that takes us all the way back to the Lord God. Uh, Jesus is said to be the Son of God. And as he steps onto the stage, we see that he is ultimately the, the longed for one. Um, he devotes himself to the study of God's word, to doing it and to teaching it to others. But ultimately, the gracious hand of God is seen in our Lord Jesus as he has uh, hands of grace that are eventually sh stretched out on the cross um, making it possible for sinners like us to actually uh, live under God's hand courageously as we do God's work and Jesus changes everything for us and as we look at him as we know that we are now a people living under the hand of God we too can take courage to do the work that God has given us to do. Uh, so let's keep praying that God would raise up more Ezra's who will be devoted to God's word and to do it and to teach it um, so that they will help God's church 
to courageously do the work that God has given us to do. Um, this is the work that Jesus said in Matthew 28 of making disciples of all nations. So let's pray that we would see many more in the church courageously doing that work. Well, God bless as you dig in further to this great chapter.